It was like a section out of a segment of Pulp Fiction. That's what I looked like. Just me and only my underwear. Yeah. And she's like on and top like, of me. Like she climbs the on the table. table. She's like, tell me if this hurts. She's like, tell me if this hurts. It is, it is, but I can do a little more. If it's gonna help, okay, I'm gonna give you more. So, so Layla, you kind of are, I'm just it popped in my head as we we're talking, uh, almost out of like 50 shades of gray minus the fun stuff. Yeah, I mean, exactly. you are like in the business of, quite frankly, delivering pain, but it's a healthy dose of pain, relief. I guess people are getting a sense of what we're talking about today. But you, you do rolfing. Describe what rolfing is. Well, basically rolfing's like, you have this fascial sleeve completely around your entire body. And sometimes the outer sleeve can get really, really tight and hold sort of inner patterns or habits or physical, I don't know, ailments, problems, injuries in, or vice versa. There's deeper layers of fascia, goes all the way to the bone. And you can almost think of them as sheaths, okay? And when they wrinkle or they get really taut, they tend to um, hold things in, hold in your ailments, um, or they don't let you ex actually express out or, you know, reach, stretch, flex, you know, all these things that bodies are meant to do. So I would say that it's a You're whole- You're a fascia expert? Yeah, it's a holistic fascial experience. I think when you, you both have done the 10 series, which is basically soup to nuts, everything gets touched. And no left, no stone left in turn. <laughs> so it's, it's rolfing, I mean, how do you spell that? R-O-L-F-I-N-G. It's, okay. it's, that's actually her name. Her name, it's a woman that, that actually designed the work in New York. Which makes sense, because it's so painful. <laughs> it's totally right. right. Her name it's, was Ida Rolf. You think that's funny too? You <laughs> yeah, just think that's I know, wonderful? It really does make like, sense. You're like, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> If it was a guy who invented it, you'd all be marching right now and be like. Totally. It'd be a different vibe. Um, but she basically was in med school with a bunch of men and they were all interested in bones and muscles. And she's like, it it actually, if you heat it, not like, you know, microwave, but imagine it's kind of like plastic is what she used to talk about it. So it's, it's, it's pliable. It moves. It's not like structure of a muscle that contracts and releases. So it's not muscle. It's not a skin. Exactly, but it's so not like it, dermis. In, in it's, one sentence, could you say like what fascia is, or is that even possible? Um, it's kind of like your own body stocking. Oh, know? like a body stocking. It's yeah. holding everything, like a netting. Almost. Yeah, I mean, you could think of it. I mean, it's everywhere, so it doesn't have. That's kind of cool. A body yeah. stocking. I've done dissections, and they yeah. basically take. They can have a fascial matrix that starts at the cranium and ends at the heels, yeah. and that's why when we go into our sessions, we touch all things to connect to open to release you know that kind of stuff i didn't realize it was like being an iraqi war prisoner during the gulf war <laughs> and some of the things that you'd be demonstrating on uh and whatever and then i even remember like as you first diving in and you're going into these areas of my body that like i didn't even know existed let alone nobody had ever touched before you're like now i'm massaging your pancreas i'm like <laughs> and then you're like yeah i've been working on cadavers for years that's what reminded me because you talked about dissecting and i'm sitting there and you're like on top of me like this and I'm like feeling organs pop out and different things. And you're like, yeah, when I work on cadavers, sometimes they're like, you know, a lot bigger than you. So I can really work my, and then I'm like, that's on the next day after that, I'm like her neck hurt. I'm like, oh, you gotta go to this woman. You'll love it. And She's so awesome. She had her fingers in my nose. Actually. I think that's session seven was yeah. the, or eight was the nose one. Seven. Pre COVID. Pre -COVID. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And only people I know. Backing up to the nose no. again. No. Finger in the nose. What was that specifically for, for well, Dana? Well, you have um, sinus, right? And there's three sinus that actually are, they are kind of considered the front of the neck. So when you actually draw a line from this area, you have an ability to influence the pineal like certain things in the brain is separated from the skull and all the parts of your like eyes nose sinus so that's different than that than the brain and there's a there's a really cool bone that looks like a butterfly it's called the sphenoid and it goes right through here and into the palate so there's all this stuff that can be affected 
if you actually, you never want people to do this really deeply because there are stories, I mean, things that I've heard in my history or, you know, my past that like, oh, someone's really gone in there too deep. So you can really, you have to, you know, kind of finesse things. So as as a quick legal disclaimer for anyone listening (laughs) or watching, if you're planning on sticking your fingers very (laughs) deep into someone's nasal cavity anytime in the near future, the note from us is not that deep. Probably yes. be good at giving COVID tests at this point. <laughs> at this point, <laughs> I honestly, side. yeah, no, because I know how far out they have to go. And if you think about this at the circus, so to kind of answer this, there's like, you know, tricksters, they'll put things like pencils oh, or things yeah, like, yeah. and there is a cavity that goes up very high, high through the nasal passage. And honestly, it's super cray cray. But you, once you release some of this fascia, people are like, Oh my God, my sinuses are open. My eyes feel more settled. My brain feels relaxed. So I, I, I remember mean, like whatever it was, that was like in session seven <laughs> or eight because you have, you have this 10, it's the way you do it, it's structured. It's so you're going, series, yeah. I come in, I'm like, all right, what weird, funky, crazy thing are we doing today? And you're like, we are going to start with your nasal cavity. I am going to get up there. And I'm like, oh, you are so whack. Okay, what are we really doing? And you're like, boom. And I'm like, oh, my nose. And I'm like, honestly, you're almost like massaging my freaking cranium from the inside out through my nose. I'm like, it can't be. You know, and I'm like, all right. Okay, you keep talking about the, how painful painful it is but can you tell us about the after experience because i think you're probably scaring a lot of people like who never want to do it i know so tell us how good it is after (laughs) obviously it must be worth it if you keep going back well i mean obviously it it creates a huge release and literally um as i got up to leave after the first session and i was like man i can't believe i paid for 10 up front that was stupid (laughs) because as soon as i get to the car and wave to this nice freaking freaky lady uh, I ain't ever coming back and all of a sudden I'm like getting into the car easier like this is good and then like someone's honking and I'm like turning around looking in ways I hadn't passed here in wow. like six years and all day long I had better energy and all that. and again all I could say is like I felt this release parts of it feel a little bit like a deep tissue massage I actually liked it okay, okay. I think it's great yeah so what? We, so you had neck pain as well, right? I have a lot of pain. I also had plantar fasciitis on the bottom of my foot, which you'd be better at explaining exactly what that is, but it's a constant pain that no matter what shoe I would wear, it would flare up. It almost just felt like the entire underneath part of my foot hurt, and it was like a sharpness when I would step down that would radiate up my leg. And Do you think that's maybe a message that. from God for being rude to your employer at times? What level of fascia <laughs> is like stress from work? Well, probably all of it. Your tissues hold your issues. I hate Mm -hmm. to say that, you guys. That was a good saying. It is. I didn't hear what you said. I don't know. I think think, think your microphone wasn't working there. But I like that your tissues hold your issues. Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing that's really interesting about working with you on this, and I think we'll talk about like why even now more than ever, more people are in pain for a lot of different reasons, some very obvious uh, with what the world is going through. But one of the things with you is that the very first and last thing that you always have me do is what I come in and, and after you and make me, you know, get into your underwear and everything else, which is like <laughs> not even like a, a warm up drink or some nice conversation. No nope. doing shots you, before you know, this. No, okay, no, Drew. <laughs> no candle, no nothing. Just she's like, okay, get in your underwear. And it, but then you're like, walk. So now again, that's also, you know, unusual. The first couple of times you walk in the door, someone's like, take off your clothes and walk. And then she's like sitting there like this. <laughs> so like, 10, uh, yeah, uh, five and a half. I no, know. You're, you're, you're just kind of like, uh, uh, yeah. And then she's, assessing and, and then the, at the end of the session it's the last thing of get up and walk so she's really watching for that and it's interesting you feel that that process as well like what was i like when i walked in what was i like when i walked out and then things that you you know retain if you keep them in mind you know a lot of things so it makes a lot of sense um well, drew you know that is specific that's on purpose because every day we stand up in gravity so gravitational pull is what we are trying to organize this this sleeve around so sometimes gravitational pull on a particular body that has no adhesions no pains no anything will have a posture to it right and so if you don't you know you're mostly face up or on your side you're very rarely like in most massages you go face down they start on your back they work on your back 
And we want to integrate you in a sort of not this rounded place that you end up being in a massage table with face down, even though I have that and we do it like once, but most people it's face up or to the side for a reason to kind of open you, to get you into a nice open body. And then you roll, you sit, there's some integrative work sitting and then there's integrative work standing. So you can kind of feel the difference. Like when you stood up and walked before I did that, that's work on your back and then you were like whoa you yeah know? in one hour she had me walk of course and then at the end i felt much lighter and she's like your feet are kicking more and she was so right like my i don't know yeah, what i was doing like but i was so out. free and that was an issue i've always had that i didn't know and that was directly correlated to like the plantar fasciitis was i'm in such a hurry to get from point a to point b and no one teaches you really how to walk properly i wasn't moving. I wasn't like using my feet and grasping. I, I'm just like clunking really fast. And yeah, in one hour, I had a But, but walk. think of that point. It, it is an interesting point. No one teaches you to walk right. But now think of it. Like if you look at runners, competitive runners, Olympic runners, what they're sitting there is years and years of coaching to the most minute tiniest measurement in your stride the way the angle the way your foot hits everything so it's proven same thing in like swimming the difference in your stroke skiing where a hundredth of a millisecond is like but yet something as basic as who in the world could say i was ever taught to walk it's like when you stop falling over as a baby you officially know how to walk and the rest is learned behavior patterned behavior i'm sure genetics hips some people have hip dysplasia whatever but there's not any ever any sense of here is a proper way to walk, strike, hold your head, you're bad now more than ever. And let's jump into some of the things that you have. Everyone's like this, you know, the, the tech neck, everything else. You have moms who are working full time, kids, right? You have two kids. Big they, boys. Always big, looking down. <laughs> yeah, always picking up, probably not using my legs, which I know is bad, you know, juggling two hands. Getting kids in and out of car seats. Yes. I mean, how many people have like seriously oh. injured themselves? Car seats are the worst, but I just have to say my husband has a two, two door car. So like getting in the back and read, I like, I know why two doors. That's another discussion. <laughs> but yeah, car seats are the worst. That's a single sure. man's car. We got to right? Yeah. I'm like you have talk two to kids, man. bro. Yeah. You need a four, a four door. <laughs> you need a minivan. Get some van. No minivan. Not yet. We're not I van. know. I'm joking. I'm totally joking. We didn't do it either. So don't worry. <laughs> car seat and getting in and out and it's brutal and painful but also stress uh work from work yeah habits um, napping incorrectly <laughs> na right that's a big one for you those naps but also right now more people than ever right are, are working from home right with i mean we're in the middle of the pandemic so and then when people who are working from home how many are really getting ergonomic setups and are sitting there investing in that or have the money or then what you, some so statistics? So you asked me to look at the statistics and according to Stanford Institute for Economic Policy Research, 42% of the U.S. labor force is working from home full time. So 42%. over 40% of Americans of the current, are working from home currently. Wow. I've seen an upspike right at the initial beginning of COVID there was a huge up spike of people just calling me, calling me. You have a such a higher level of stress and unknowns. A lot of people out of work, more you know, crazy unemployment rates, don't know you know if they're going to be able to make their mortgage, their rent, their bills, what's going to happen next. All those unknowns, you know, I, I've said that you know you're not depressed if you're uh, you're not you're not weird if you're depressed in the time we're living in right now. I think you're weird if you're not depressed to some degree with what's happening um, in in the world right now on every level. Um, so that brings you like this, right? So then you have the extra weight you're carrying. Um, I know too much booze doesn't make you flexible. I don't think, I don't, maybe you don't feel it when you break, but <laughs> bend as well, but. No, it's know. not good for your liver. <laughs> you know this. And liver can, you know, it can swell. So then it swells into your rib cage or abdominus or your back. It can all be relative. If you don't have access to rolfing, you know, what are the things that everyday people can and should be doing just to help alleviate some of the issues, prevent them in the first place that they can do on their own at home. Sure. I mean, one of my favorite things to do is if you have a, a door that isn't too tall for you, get up and put your fingers more towards the hinge and hang. You want to get long. You want to stretch a little, lay down. Um, you can get that little wheel or a foam roller. 
which is basically myofascial release based on, you know, the foam roller. So, but just don't stop. I mean, there's, that's the biggest key is trying to do a habit or consistency. Like you're at work all day, hunched over, stand up every hour, take a walk around, stretch. I think that people are better at that. Um, it's been a long time since I've had an office job or <laughs> sitting at a desk. So I feel like, you know, if you just take some little steps towards it, you don't have to spend, I mean, rolfers tend to be pricey, um, but any kind of touch could be effective if you're not opposed to any kind of touch, but I would hang. I would literally just hang from something. I think it would, you know, stretch out the lat, stretch out your low back, pull your stomach in, reach for the floor, you know, all of it. And even getting up and standing. I mean, I've caught myself before where sometimes so much time will go by during the course of a day and I'll be so frustrated with myself. Like, I cannot believe I've just sat this long from, you know, recently, I think a few months ago, I put in a, one of those attachments where my, I could stand at my desk now. Um, and I don't do it all day, but I definitely probably stand a few more hours a day combined than I used to. I mean, no. set alarms, you know, like put some alarm on your clock or, you know, just habits. It's, it's a habit. Cause if I asked you, did you brush your teeth this morning? You're like, yeah, I pretty much did. I think, <laughs> or did you do it before you went to bed? So there's some habits that are just inherent and we just have, you know, especially when, when times get like this, they take us off our schedule. We have to be flexible. We have to figure out how to stay doing something just one something what are some direct correlations of the body that most people may not know like when someone comes in and says i have neck pain what else could it be in the body or when somebody comes in and says i have lower back pain what else could it be in the body that they may not realize well on i'd say like the most surface level you could think of um you know, energetics. You could be around too many things that are influencing you. You could have stress, emotional stress that builds up and you go, why do I feel like everything's so tight? Um, these are the typical, most people know about them. Low back can be considered support, like a lack of or needing it. Um, it could go deeper into something even more medical, like around your entire frame, your, mo your bones, your muscles, they're all built around your organs. So if there's torsions in your bones and muscles to protect something or contract around it, or it's expanding so much, you're gonna get these torsions in your neck, your back, your spine, and that plays heavy on the nervous system. So the central nervous system can feel like it is on fight or flight. And if your resistance level, your cortisols, all these things get just whacked out on fight or flight, you'll never really feel grounded. You'll never have these essence. That's interesting. Have you ever heard of like you hold emotional pain in different parts of your body? And do you believe yeah. that? I mean, I think about it. If you're sick to your stomach, you're literally sick to your stomach. You can yeah. cause a migraine. Stress is held in different places. So if we're used to migraines and we're used to stomach aches, who's to say another part of your body can't hurt because you're holding it? Yeah, well, and, and you know, I'd say about once or twice a year, my back on average goes out, you know, or it's out for like five, six days where I have very limited mobility. And then, you know, each time it does, and anyone whose back goes out can relate where you're like, oh man, I if this doesn't go away, like, and you just, you know, you sneeze or cough, and you're like, oh, oh. my back never went out once over the years when I was like on vacation, loose, happy, things were going through. It was always during a window of prolonged stress because what do you do when you're stressed? You're like, and you're holding things in, you're super tight, you're clinching areas, and if you squeeze your fist like this as hard as you can, you put a penny and say, squeeze it for 15 minutes to the point, then all of a sudden you say, okay, now you can let it go. You know, your, your hand, it's just not gonna release, it takes a while, and, and you're almost like the, in that short window of time. And to peel it open, right. it actually hurts. And now imagine when you're doing yeah. that to your neck, your back, your, or, and internally, you know, yeah. and you know, so it is an interesting thing about when to not take into account how harmful stress is on so many levels. And just to your point, I do have 10 year olds in my practice. I have five year olds in my practice. Just so you know, the littles don't 
cry as bad as you. No, I'm just kidding. Ah, I'm totally, I'm totally kidding. I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, I'm, jo- I'm totally joking. But it's relative. Like some of it, you particularly like kind of say, I know it's doing something. And these margins are different for everybody. But just know that Rolfer's dream is not to make you see red. OK, it's just that. Um, you know, there's a dance that goes on when someone's working with your body. There's not like, oh, it's my way or the highway. Get off it. And so rolfers don't do this. Maybe I'm just so an I'm overachiever just you. and I encourage you to be more extreme so I can achieve optimal results. I know. I, just, I, know. I think that's one possible scenario you might want to consider. I don't know. So I have a question. And Drew, you probably want to put your earmuffs on for this one. But, oh, my God. Because it's a womanly question. Oh, uh, why? This but is like- obviously, as women, we yeah. go through, you know, cycles, hormones, that sort of thing, where our bodies might be in more pain than. Do you address, like, any, like, pelvic hormonal floor? thing? Yeah. yeah. We go to the pelvic floor. Okay. I go there on men, women. I just don't do this on children. You know, gotcha. I mean, obviously, but I educate I them to it. About that. There's that major laws right. about that, but but that's as you know, as it's an unspoken rule, right? But right. but at least I I talk to them about it because mm-hmm. it's a muscular anatomical, you know, it's anatomic. It's mm-hmm. what's your anatomy? You know, what I mean, yeah. so a lot of times I think you learn. Yeah, we you just learn. had a whole conversation yeah. about this. It's something really? all my sisters. That's another. I hold my stress. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's like you you get a chance to kind of have a bird's eye view of yourself when someone else is working on you. And I think with that kind of integrative quality, the brain settles because just like Drew said, you know, I'm on vacation. I'm happy. Do you notice pain? Pretty much. No, nobody does across the board. And pain is a very hard concept for all scientists, med- medical doctors, anybody to really nail down and say conclusively, it is this. I mean, if it doesn't go away, sometimes it's a it's it's hard to nail down. You can ask orthos, you can ask these chiros, all of them. They say the same thing. So Alternative to address treatments. your issues, though, like, it, I mean, the pelvic stuff, it's, yeah. it's awesome. I'm oh, just going to really? say, yeah. It's yeah. So interesting. OK. All right, so I'm supposed to go put on my gym shorts, um, not my my normal attire. I'm not wearing my underwear today while we do this. Wait, before we do this, should we just have Layla set up really quickly? This is session two for him or three? three? Okay, three out of the time. ten, out of the ten. package of ten. Well, so it's, this a, is just it's a, called a ten series. Oh, ten Typically, series. it's called a ten series. I know okay. he wants to call it a ten package, but it's called a ten series. And it's a Groupon, you know. You get it's not a Groupon. Well, what is, why, why ten? And like, what's the like by the end of ten, he should be a certain level? Or can you explain no, just real quick? Ten is like. Um, the first three are sort of surface weight. Like we're touching pretty much everywhere on your body. Think of it more as like the Apple outside sleeve. And then um, sessions four through seven go through the core. So they go to the inner side of your ness your outerness okay so we're working midlines and you know pelvic floors and certain things all the way up through your center hence the the neck and shoulders is being like the last and then eight nines and tens are integrative qualities so they tend to be something that um are it's either like a lower half session an upper half session or an entire body session but it's all to integrate you into like Dana the other day she got up and walked and it was like she just wasn't as deeply into her legs as she needed to be so it's like you know sit down do some work she stands up and she's walking and you could tell her legs were fit she felt it they were coming from her back and it's like that's how you want someone to leave you want them to feel prepared grounded but with a sense of up and as much as they can you don't want to like like it's not like I'm a magician or I'm trying to redo who you are, but it's it's sort of like you want to enhance somebody towards a progressive betterness of themselves as they leave. So that's why the 10 series is so important and it works. Afterwards, if I saw Drew between the last time I saw him and this time, he might have come in to see me two or three times to do more eight, nines and tens. But other than that, it's like people go away and they, it's not massage like where they come back every week, every week, every week. But I, I would know? text her first but, and be like, hey, man, how you doing? Good. So you in a good mood today? 
Yeah. You know, because also like if she's like if she's like, oh, this happened and then this and then my husband, this, my kids are that like whatever. I'm um, there's no way I'm like going in. I mean, she yeah. needs to release her stress too, Drew. I mean, I heard that like she there were cadavers that she was practicing on that were screaming like there's no way. I mean, no, she's freaking strong. All right. So I will go change while you guys set up stuff here beyond whatever you're going to do. And then uh, I'll come back. OK. Let's do it. I kind of see a, a curvature going this way. I see definitely, you know, difference in his shoulders. Um, so I'm seeing stuff. He's got a pretty, he's got a lot of good things going on because this is Drew's second round at this. So I still want this essence of up, you know? So see how that picks up his side. So this is good. Whoever's taking a shot of whatever, take your arms up, Drew. Turn your palms to face each other. And all you're going to do is take a side bend. It's, it either doesn't matter. Take a side bend. Go Maybe to like one. The finger thing like that? Nope. Just straight up and then go to run right, right side or left side. It doesn't matter. But go over. Yeah. And just hold it. So go as far as you can. And then come up. You want me to bend, without bending my knees? Without bending your knees, without moving your hips. And then go over to your left side. And come back up. So basically, when we work on, when I work on him, when we work, <laughs> we're going to be working see, on you. Yeah. You get his feet, you get his head, and I get his middle. Okay, here we go. No, but basically, what we're going to do is, is. Can I face you? Now? Can, you Can I come back into the world and yeah. conversation? I'm going to start having you on your left side. So take a deep breath. What's cool is like that. I feel like you actually moving a muscle like that in 10 seconds yourself that like an hour of a, of a stretch class would not do that. I would say, you know, Drew has a lot of, you know, like we were looking at his dim, his back dimples or so he's pretty even. There's not a, like a huge discrepancy. There's some stuff in his shoulders for sure. There's stuff all through here. Isn't that a sign of higher intelligence according to some people? <laughs> it could be. It's like the second toe being bigger or something like that. <laughs> yeah, that just means you're descended to ET. Yeah. Who's the hardest to work with? <laughs> so now that you're here, you see why I have all this stress, right? I feel like we're standing over a hospital bed with Drew, like, <laughs> whimpering. By the way, it's not that bad. <laughs> exactly. Suck it up. <laughs> So you know that thing we were talking about earlier about stress? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In here we try to talk about other things. But maybe stress is good. I don't know. So you mentioned that you work with um, young young people, right? Yeah. What kind of I guess what's the reasoning that they come to you? Like is it sometimes like um, you know, kids have they have all kinds of you know, scoliosis, okay, okay yeah. big one. I helped a young girl not have to really have surgery. Wow. You know, because you can help the bones find a better path, whether it's it's part of their muscular development. Um, but their bones, when they're predisposed to scoliosis, sometimes you're just like, keep taking pictures at 12, 11, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then as they go through puberty, it's like, it's it's bad. Right, yeah. So, you know, it's been helpful to dissipate that, but it's just, they have scoliosis. But what you can do is decrease it a lot if you work on it. So through most, mostly people do PT or they get, you know, diagnosed that they have to have surgery with the rods in their backs. And that's what I'm kind of avoid with this type of stuff is any kind of surgery. All of this correction is good neural. It's really good neural because he's figuring out how to release his shoulder, but straighten his arm. And some people you think, oh, that's easy to do. It's not. Not everybody has that body awareness or... Zoolander couldn't do less. <laughs> okay, now stretch the arm, not from here. Yeah, keep going, stretch. See, so he okay. tries to go from here. See how hard that is? So. Yeah. Trying to stretch that way is so hard for him because he's really tight in the back of his arm here. 
everybody's got their thing, right? Oh, Layla, yeah, when you are pressing down there, that's releasing the shoulders. Like you were a little bit lower before. Yes. Yeah. This is where his, his lats engage all the way down here on his back. But there's things, and it could have been because he got the tattoo that he keeps clenching, clenching, clenching down. And mm -hmm. it's hard to, I don't want him to take it. If it's hard, if it's too much for him, he just needs to get into a good position. I need to lighten up and he needs to breathe. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So, but you can tell it's hard sometimes to hold positions when people are working on you. So he's doing great. Well, Dana, when you first did this, did you feel like, I don't know. I mean, I feel like you, you had the plantar stuff some hip stuff major hip stuff plantar stuff but i think i initially had something up with one of my legs too like i always felt like i felt yeah. something or it was strange yeah and so you worked you worked in, on my psoas too like everything and i think mm -hmm. that's tied into like pelvic floor stuff uti stuff because mm -hmm. the muscles like are connected to the hips so she would work on one part of my body and it would like, maybe they fall over yeah the plantar fasciitis I've just taken your recommendation on like what to do and I'll walk on the beach and use my feet and grip because you know you're in shoes and you're just they're pottering and not getting that natural motion. I mean, there's a sweet spot and then there's too much because you can start erring too much in a wrong direction and start, just depends on your back, I think. And for her, I mean, the curvature of the upper back is round. It's not flat or arched. And so most people try to arch it and then it does something to their low back and it does something to their cervical spine. So you want to keep the roundness in your upper back. It's just that people slump. It's not the same as the opposite, <laughs> you know? So yeah. you need to strengthen those back muscles, but that's different than holding your back. Sometimes like taking the edge off just one direction or another will like change it. Well, you do, you feel in areas and ways that you just didn't know existed within you. Well, and there's chiros that do something called ART, but they just don't do it everywhere. Yeah. So they tend to end up having like, I don't know, it be your low back or your shoulder condition or something. And, and it is similar to this. Okay, straighten your arms. I'm not a fan of like the chiros cracking and snapping. I know, but did you feel your back just adjust a second ago? Yeah, because then you didn't snap it or crack it. Take the arms out to the side and bring the palms up above your head. Touch them above your head, the back of your palms. Keep going, keep going. See that? And then bring those arms down. I could really see the difference. Oh, you did yeah. good. And seeing him every day and seeing him last year and the year before, before you, like, and he did have this overall, like, look of yeah. pain or discomfort. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an elbow. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for all it. of that stuff.